Good afternoon, everybody. Mental health and well-being. Why have I chosen to engage in an field study on this topic? Well, it's widely acknowledged that farming can be a stressful occupation. And I'm sure you all have knowledge of that, experience of that. It's perhaps unique in the way that it's exposed to this wide range of pressures. And we know that there are farmers day in, day out, operating with high levels of stress and overwhelm that are damaging to their health. Now globally, in society, mental health is one of the big issues we face today. One in four of us in any given year may experience a mental health difficulty. There are reports that levels of stress and depression amongst farmers are on the rise. And we know that every year, sadly, around 50 farmers die by suicide. Now, in recent years, mental health has become a topic that many in the industry are speaking out about more. The agricultural media, our farmer charities, and young farmer clubs have all done a great job in highlighting this issue. Though attitudes are slowly changing, the topic of mental health remains a taboo one for many. And most would agree that such stigma is particularly challenging for farming men. Why is this subject of relevance to me? I come from a family with a long history of mental health difficulty. And having worked in the industry alongside farmers for all my career, it's an issue that I started to become concerned about. And also as a counselor and therapist working to support farmer clients, I want to improve both my own and the industry's understanding of this issue so that we can continue taking steps to address this. So with my Nuffield study, I set out to explore how other farming nations were struggling with this issue and what we might learn from approaches that they were taking to respond to the challenge. So in addition to the UK, my journey took me to Ireland, to France, Finland, Sweden, Denmark, yet undoubtedly, the most impactful part of my Nuffield experience was my visits to Australia and New Zealand. Two countries, both struggling with the issue of rural mental health and farmer suicide. However, I found a lot of positive activity, various initiatives and uh, resources aiming to break down taboo, to normalize the issue so that people talk as openly about it as they may do other common farming challenges. The industry in both countries is also going into the farming communities, delivering educational workshops and structured training. Here in New South Wales, Australia, I was able to take part in a workshop alongside farming families and Aboriginal leaders. And in New Zealand, I encountered similar workshops, such as this one here, delivered by Dairy NZ. Now these types of training, they combine mental health awareness together with the promotion of well-being behaviors and suicide prevention skills. They've been specifically designed for the agricultural community with the language, the scenarios, the examples, all framed in relevant farming related terms, delivered by trained facilitators themselves familiar with or drawn from the farming world. Now, as well as educating the farming community, this training is also being particularly used to up upskill the rural professionals, the likes of our vets, our feed and seed reps, accountants, bankers, those trades across the country going up farm drives every day. So there's been a concerted effort in New Zealand to roll this structured training out across the country, workshops held all over the country, meaning that thousands of rural professionals have now been trained up so that they are skilled in spotting the warning signs of distress in people, so they have the confidence to engage in supportive conversation with those who may be struggling, and the knowledge of services that those in difficulty could be referred to. So by doing this, having created a sort of detection network that can reach and expand into rural areas, they're now well placed to run campaigns such as this one they're doing in Australia, look over the farm gate, which encourages people to do exactly that. Now this is an image that follows the metaphor of a cliff and something I picked up from New Zealand. So if we follow the image, if we go to the edge of the cliff, here we find those farmers who are typically presenting as stressed, as overwhelmed. They may be struggling mentally, emotionally, and practically to deal with the many challenges they're facing. 
we go to the bottom of the cliff, we find those people in serious distress. And here we're talking about people who maybe require more specialized, professional, uh, clinical or medical support. And we may say that some here may be considered at higher risk of suicide. And behind the hedge, we have the majority of farmers generally enjoying a good state of overall health and well-being. Now, at the edge of the cliff, this is where I'd say most of our work in the UK has been concentrated. And indeed, my Nuffield experience really confirmed to me how fortunate we are to have some people doing great work in this area, the likes of the Farming Community Network, RABI, many other local and regionalized support groups. They're typically dealing with people in distress or close to even to breaking point, and they typically need a mix of emotional support and practical assistance. Same in Australia and New Zealand, but interestingly, the focus is now moving to behind the hedge with the aim of asking the question, how can we support farmers here to remain healthy and strong so they're less at risk of creeping to the edge of the cliff, sufficiently aware that if they do, they recognize that and take steps to address it, and if need be, they seek help, and they get that help in good time before it gets difficult. So what did I find going on behind the hedge? Dairy NZ. This is New Zealand's largest levy-funded research and extension body. I suppose the nearest equivalent in this country would be AHDB Dairy. It has its own dedicated wellness and well-being program. So to see an industry leader of its size, profile, and extension capability developing a program and a staff team purely for this issue was inspiring. So they have stepped into this space behind the hedge by running specialist training, incorporating well-being messages and strategies into their regular seminars, um, discussion groups, and everyday communication channels. Using the mantra, live well, farm well, FarmStrong is another fantastic New Zealand initiative, which is aiming to encourage a culture change whereby farmers take ownership for their physical and mental health. It's funded with investment from leading farm sector organizations, and it purposefully avoids talking in terms of mental health, of depression, of suicide. Instead, it focuses solely on the promotion of positive well-being behaviors and strategies that can help people better deal with the ups and downs of farming. So in this space behind the hedge, mental health has been repositioned in order to engage farmers by talking in terms of well-being and resilience. Now, resilience has become something of a buzzword in agriculture in recent years, and we've heard it mentioned a few times today, Doug talking about financial resilience. Yet rather than financial resilience or crop resilience or herd resilience, the conversation was moving to how can we help farmers to build up their mental and emotional resilience? In New Zealand, I encountered healthy thinking workshops designed specifically for farmers. Now these combine elements of cognitive behavioral techniques, stress management strategies, all to help farmers improve the management of their thoughts, their behaviors, their emotions. And all of this very much presented as a performance enhancing tool, i.e. this can help make you a better and more resilient farmer. We know there is now clear evidence of a relationship, improved relationship between exercise and mental health and well-being. FarmStrong has set a vision for New Zealand to be the fittest farming nation in the world. And it's looking at different ways it can support farmers to incorporate more exercise into their busy lives. I also came across groups of kiwi fruit growers who were, under, who, who were being coached by professional sleep doctors in how to rest better, and how to achieve a productive sleep during stressful times. And my personal favorite, tractor yoga. <laughs> Here, an Australian beef farmer has turned yoga instructor and developed his own form of tractor yoga that he's teaching to local farmer groups and getting quite a bit of interest and engagement. And for yoga enthusiasts amongst you, the picture on the right there is Chris doing the lion pose. So these were just some examples of how farmers were being enthused to value and intentionally invest in their well-being and making use of credible evidence techniques to do so. 
So to summarize some key messages for today, the importance of accelerating the upskilling of farmers and rural professionals in mental health. And no doubt there are pockets of activity in the UK where this is happening. Uh, if we could scale up this activity nationally, I think it would really help to develop that sort of expansive reach that they may be beginning to achieve in Australia and New Zealand. Secondly, the importance of tackling mental health both downstream, i.e. at the cliff face, and upstream, in other words, behind the hedge. So in addition to having, to those, having those approaches to support those in immediate or emergency need, those upstream, i.e. behind the hedge, they also need to be targeted with preventative, proactive measures. And there are now well understood strategies to help develop resilience. And as we've just seen, those farmers who are open enough to embrace such measures may be better placed to cope with the stresses and pressures of farming. So I'd like to extend my huge thanks to Nuffield and particularly my sponsor, the John Oldacre Foundation. Their support of me has given me a fantastic profile and a fantastic platform with which to be able to highlight this important issue. My report and the issues that it explores has been featured in a number of leading sector publications and many more to come. And I have been received many uh, requests to talk at various gatherings about this. And this profile has only been possible by having Nuffield behind me and the credibility that that brings. So I will continue to do my best to be an effective advocate for this issue. Going forward from here, I'm also looking at developing farmer-specific training in mental health awareness and suicide prevention skills using ideas and inspiration that I picked up from my Nuffield travels and looking at developing, delivering that to farmer stakeholders in the Northwest and in the UK. And I'm also collaborate, looking at collaborating with others to see if we can develop appropriate training that we can take in the farming sector to um, help with the development of resilient skills. And I continue to be in the process of talking to various organizations to share the learning emerging from my study and to see if we can take forward other ideas. So I'd like to conclude here with some images of the many farmers and growers that I met during my Nuffield study who helped me and were open to discuss this issue with me. And I realize that we're here today as Nuffield to sort of explore some of the challenges the industry faces and how we might respond to them. And I'd like to say that I believe perhaps the most important and influential asset on the farm are the individuals behind it. We need to look after the people. If we do not look after the people, if we do want a profitable and productive farming industry, we need a sustainable and healthy workforce. Thank you. <laughs>